The Chapel of the Abiding Presence on the Gettysburg campus of United Lutheran Seminary was completed in 1942, at a time when our nation was consumed by war and not yet rising to the challenge of cultural competency. The chapel windows, designed and crafted by Harold Rambush in his New York studio, tell a beautiful yet incomplete story of God's creation narrative through its interpretation of Hebrew and Christian testaments and a picture of colonial and Christian expansionism from Europe throughout the fledgling United States. The window narrative ends in the 1940s, a time when Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and Asian Americans, to say nothing of the LGBTQIA community, were not represented in the church or common discourse in general. Commissioned in September of 2019, for All the Saints is a series of portraits painted by the artist Ophelia Chambliss that enhances the narrative of the chapel windows and the worship life of the seminary community. The collection will be displayed on both campuses of United Lutheran Seminary, traveling back and forth on an annual basis for public display in both Gettysburg and Philadelphia. This installation is made possible by a generous gift from the people of St. John's Lutheran Church of Highland in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The gift was made in honor of the Reverend Bill Deem, an alumnus of the former Lutheran Theological Seminary at Gettysburg, class of 1981. We are blessed to have Ophelia Chambliss talk about her new work, For All the Saints. Hi, my name is Ophelia Chambliss. I am an artist, a muralist, and an educator, and I currently live in York, Pennsylvania. I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, and I have been painting and doing project artwork um, for the past 25 years or so. I was contacted to do a mural project of the 16 Saints for um, the Lutheran Chapel here in Gettysburg. This is one of the portraits. Um, this is of Oscar Romero. And this one was interesting, and the entire project was interesting because they had these particular murals that had this textured design. So my first step was to create the texture for the background images of all of the pieces. For this particular one, of the reference images that I found, um, the one I decided to use was the one with the halo, because I thought it kind of spoke um, to his character and what he believed in and what he did within his community. This portrait of Mahalia Jackson was particularly fun. What was really interesting about this project was that they had a cultural representation of everyone. And for the black community, complexion is, is very important. So I had to really work with getting accurate representation of complexion. And I tried to make sure that each individual of color had the right complexion throughout the series. It was very fun to incorporate the floral design in each of the pieces, um, capture um, essence of their character, and with Mahalia, the smile was a key component. Some of the portraits in the series had only black and white reference, or they had limited reference, or images where the person just did not smile, and Dorothy Day was one of those but there's a lot of character in her face and a lot of strength. And um, the eyes and being able to look into her eyes became a really key part of the portrait. There's a, always a seriousness to what she does in all of her reflection of her image. So I wanted to capture that, but I still wanted her to have a very personable look to it. This portrait of Watchman Nee is probably one of my favorites in the series. It took a while to find good reference images um, for this particular portrait, and it's actually a combination of multiple images, um, pulling color from one, um, angle from another, um, managing the hair from another. But again, all of them coming together um, took some compiling and working and still working to maintain that they were part of a series. I really like uh, the way all of them have worked out, being able to introduce color. And I thought it was important to have the kind of traditional 
Nehru type collar in this particular portrait. Most of us have seen Fannie Lou Hamer's speech and the challenge of this particular portrait was in being able to capture some of the emotion that was involved in that. Most of the photos that you see of her at that time, she had tears in her eyes and her eyes were slightly red. So I had to actually work at putting some of that redness in her eyes to capture that raw emotion of what was going on, what she was speaking about in that time. I thought that was a very important piece of this. There were a couple portraits in the series that only had black and white reference images. And there were at least two of them that had black and white images that were really quite old. So being able to pull color and complexion and still maintain some of the authenticity of the black and white image was very important to me. This is one of those, so of Harriet Cross Spaeth. So it was a very um, grainy um, and tightly configured black and white image, but I also wanted to kind of capture that. So I tried to treat it as a black and white colorized image and maintain that it was one of the older of the images. This particular portrait was a great deal of fun um, for capturing complexion, for capturing the very casual gaze um, that he had at the viewer, um, making the glasses look like they were truly wire-rimmed uh, glasses as well. And I thought it was important because of the way that he was gazing out at the viewer and how significant he is to the Lutheran um, church that he really wanted to look at uh, the person and be very casual in that. So that was uh, an important one. This is another one of the images that only had black and white reference. So again, I wanted to treat it like a black and white colorized photograph. But it was also important to try to capture the texture of his hair to give the significance that he was a person of color when at that time, typically, um, like Frederick Douglass, they would comb their hair back to kind of calm that down, but it had a very um, texturized look to it. It was a fun image to work on, to transfer um, a person of colors from a black and white image and also capture the texture at the same time in the hair. One of the questions I'm often asked is how long a project takes. And the easy answer is it depends. Some pieces always take a little bit longer than others. This particular portrait of Cesar Chavez took more time than others. I'm not quite sure if I worked extra on the complexion. I know I really worked very long on the hair, but some take a little bit longer than others. Some pieces will always look more labored than others. Some are smoother. But this one um, did take a little while. I think I really wanted to make sure that I captured the complexion. The images that I had to work from didn't always do that. So it was, um, I don't want to say more time consuming, but it did take a little bit longer. The reference images for Herm Stimpley came with several photos that were from different points and times in his life. Uh, the glasses changed, the hair changed, but because he was significant to the area and to people who are still here, it was important to use an image or capture him in a way that most people remembered him, and that was the most significant one. So everything from the style of his hair, the shape of his glasses, all of the tonalities of his complexion had to go into working on this portrait. I think it came out really well, and I think that people will be pleased with the representation of him. In doing this portrait, one of the things I think about is representation. And for people of color, people of indigenous societies, it's important for them to represent themselves in a way that is from their own lens. Native Americans have often not been represented that way. So in doing this portrait, I thought about how best might I uh, do justice to this image when the reference might have been uh, done in a different way. So I really try to capture a soft gaze, um, a genuine gaze, and to capture some gleam uh, to the hair to give it a sense of um, strength and texture that was true to, to the individual and focus less on the adornments of the outfit. With this particular portrait, 
again, hair, hairline, texture, the growth direction of the hair, the uh, shape of the glasses, all of those are identifying factors. And in addition to doing the portrait, figuring out where I was going to position them on the canvas, you know, which direction are they looking in, uh, which direction is it important for them to look in. Uh, looking backwards, looking forward, uh, sometimes they're looking in an upward direction. So all of those factors are part of putting this together. And then where did the de decorative flourishes go and are they looking at those? So again, I was happy to find a variety of reference images to be able to kind of create the most representational one. In addition to capturing the complexion and the most memorable pose of these portraits, I wanted to make sure that they had the representation of an icon. So in cases you'll see some uh, black outline and some strong shadows and some strong reference points, but I wanted it to make sure that it was a strong image. This could have very easily be done as representational portraits, soft tones, but it would not have had that strong image that someone can see from across the room and identify who this person was and have this really good sense of what they were to the community and to the world. Doing a portrait of Mother Teresa would be remiss in not getting the symbolism or the semiotics of representation, which a key part of who she was and how she's recognized was with her shawl with the blue lining on it. That was the easy part. The important part was capturing the generosity in her eyes and how she gazed at the viewer. Bertha Paulson's portrait was probably the very first one that I did in the entire series. I picked one person kind of from each complexion family just to make sure that I was uh, consistent and was able to capture that. I also really enjoyed the pose. So it was just beyond doing a portrait, which was a simple straightforward headshot, but to capture some of the casual, at ease nature of who the person was, was also very important. There were several components that I wanted to show in Harriet Tubman's portrait. I wanted to show that in addition to being a woman who could rescue thousands of slaves, travel through the night by foot, carrying a pistol or by horseback, and still be this beautiful, gentle individual that she was. I wanted to capture her deep brown complexion. I wanted to capture the braids in her hair and then put her in an outfit that was suitable to a portrait and a person of her caliber. When starting this project and even having the initial discussions, one of the first things I had to do was wrap my head around, how was I going to do this? How am I going to create portraits that speak to all of these wonderful individuals and what they have done in their lifetime? things that they've done to make this world a better place today. In going through the chapel, looking at the windows and just being moved by all of the images. And as an artist, part of what we do and how we do it is about how we feel it. So this project was very exciting to me. And as I speak right now, I start to get a little bit choked up because I could feel why this was important, um, why this needed to be done. So one of the initial things that was done was taking pictures of the windows and then wanting to make sure that I matched and was true to what already existed. So I had to go through, I pulled all the canvases together and kind of did this in phases and made sure that I captured the texture, figuring out problem solving, how do I capture this texture um, of these windows and you know, finding the right sponge and the right amount of flecking to go through and de do each one of them. And once I achieved that, uh, deciding which flourishes to pull into the image. So in doing the portraits, it was important to match their skin tones or to be true to who they were. And complexion is a very important thing. So I started with three baseline skin tones, trying to make sure that I had a representation of a light and a medium and a darker skin tone and to be very true to that. I think it's important to who we are and I think it added to the diversity and the representation of the entire project. After the design part was done, it becomes production. 
But again, as I mentioned that I was feeling this project from the very beginning, it's a very reflective time for me to be painting each of these individuals, thinking of when they were, how they were, and who they were doing the things that they were doing. And it's a very emotional thing. Um, I was actually very happy to have a, a huge chunk of time to work on them. I believe I worked on them over a winter break. And to be able to kind of immerse myself in the process, spending time with them, um, looking at reference images, looking at who they were and what they've done. But all of that's in there. All of that is in each of these portraits as I have done them. I could feel each of them. And again, as I look at them, as I talk about and remember doing them, it was a very emotional thing. And I'm so excited to have been a part of this.